and um, what, what, what is happening? Be, what is this? What is this event? Okay. It's well, very it's, exciting, it, Jeff. Yeah, it, re it relates to the multiple literacies course I've been teaching. And I teach this course in two different uh, venues, sort of. One of them, actually, it was requested in 2003, I think, by the TESOL Inc. And uh, they wanted me to teach this course in multiple literacies for the principles and practices of online teaching course, uh, program. And they have in that program, of, I can't, could tell you more about the program, actually, than I could. but. Uh, Multiliteracies was one of the courses they envisaged, and they just asked me to teach it, and I agreed and boned up on multiliteracies after that, and found out quite a lot about it. And uh, anyway, but I mean, it's it's basically kind of what we've been doing. It's kind of like mooking, you know. We've been doing this by different names, but uh, well, in uh, you could go in, in the late '90s, the uh, the London group coined the term multiliteracies to as a way of coping with the um, you know, some of the new literacies people are having to learn in the new digital age. So, in any event, it turns out to be a pretty robust uh, paradigm, I think, and it's been addressed. I mean, it's, it's just so interesting. The course is constantly evolving. But one of my latest it, two it different froze. venues, I also teach it. Sorry? No, it looked like you locked up for a minute. Sorry. Uh, okay. Um, it, I also teach it for the Electronic Village Online sessions, and um, a, oh, this, oh, oh, Robin is in the chat. That's great. Okay, she's in the in the text chat. I guess she's listening to the stream, but maybe she doesn't know how to get into the Hangout. So uh, maybe she wasn't in invited. The, yeah. Take care of that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, anyway. Um, so the uh, the course has evolved into where I'm I'm sort of running it on MOOC precepts, which I think, as I said, we've been doing all along. But at least you know uh, people uh, George Siemens and Stephen Downs and Dave Cormier and others have at least formalized some of these precepts and shown us how uh, they are actually create great learning environments. I think kind of like webheads, it doesn't really work for everybody. Some people want to be directed and other people are more self-directed. So for really self-directed people like Kate and Robin, then uh, you know the, the MOOC uh, course structure seems to work very well. And of course we've been talking a lot about that in the Hangouts we've had lately with uh, Lisa Lane, for example, who's running a similar course. And um, so one of the and, and that's that's kind of the framework for the course but then the assessment I've started using the last two times I ran the course were e-portfolios I think I actually started using them many years ago but I actually made them a formal part of the assessment the last time I did this one year ago for the uh, PPOT course program what form does the so, e-portfolio take well uh, it's <laughs> A little, it's whatever you want it to be. Uh, I like yours, Jeff. Actually, that, that JeffLebo.net. That's a really nice e-portfolio. Um, but basically, it's just uh, in my case, it's kind of a sidebar on my advanced education blog, at blogspot.com. And um, you know, it's just kind of the story of your life in so many links. But uh, as, as far as the course is concerned, I just ask the students to please. Uh, make uh, say what you want to learn from the course and then think of a plan for how you can achieve what you want to learn and then document that by the end of the course. And it's a four week course and the EVO sessions is five weeks. It works kind of well. It worked last time I did it. We had about oh, oh great. Good. Here's Robin. Yeah. I had um, probably about eight active participants and it was a, a nice group. Hi Robin. How are you? But this time around, we had six people enrolled. Two people dropped out almost immediately, leaving us four participants. And the uh, two of those four just haven't touched in at all. I don't think I've seen any email from them hardly or anything. Uh, um, maybe the, you, uh, Robin and Kate, have detected some interaction from the other two. But the two who are remaining and who are pictured in the middle of your screen here, are some of the best 
participants you could ask for. I mean, they they are really, um, you know, very active and uh, and they're just making the, they're making the course go really well. And and they both produced e-portfolios, which is well, that that was kind of the matriculation of the course. If if I had say ten or twenty people doing them, I would give them the option of coming here and presenting on the last day of the course. This is October 2nd, 2011. Happens to be the very last day of this course. It's graduation time. And um, <laughs> and these, uh, Robin and, and Kate, of course, pass with flying colors. Uh, but anyway, it's, it's, it's passing. An e-portfolio suggests that you're passing your own on your own uh, uh, criteria, you know, which is kind of what learning should be. If you're trying to learn what you want to learn. And that's what George Siemens articulates so nicely um, in, uh, in some of the things he says about the MOOCs. So, yeah, basically, uh, we can uh, have Robin and uh, Kate just tell a little bit about what they did and, you know, what, what they show us what they've come up with as their e-portfolios. Uh, or at what progress they made on it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. How did you want to do this? I, I did a, t a small PowerPoint um, to go over stuff that's not on my blog. Did did you want to do screen sharing? Did I read, or how were we going to try to do that? We got extras going on here, Jeff. W no, this is not a hangout with extra. But maybe this could be a pop graduation quiz. Uh, the graduates need to form a <laughs> hangout Robin with extra. Robin, what's going on with Robin? There's, there's a prowler in her house. <laughs> hi, hi, Mr. Albers. <laughs> oh, I suspect Robin is having an audio issue. Oh. oh. So what did you say, Jeff? Oh, I was saying technician. this is a regular hangout, uh, and uh -huh. I started this because I like the display better. The regular uh -huh. Hangout has the horizontal tiles, the with extras has mm. the vertical one, but we don't have the presentation sharing or the screen sharing. And if we're going to be sharing e-portfolios, the extras might be nice because not only could you show your PowerPoint, or is it a Google Doc or is it a PowerPoint? Either way, you could share yeah, either with way. extras. But it's like such a no big deal. I could even read off what I have did. Um, Unless Robin had something, um, I don't the know. Rest Being so multiliterate, I'm kind of you know I'm thinking we should do some razzle dazzle. <laughs> well, if you're game, you look like you're you're ready well, to go. and I'm thinking this is a great uh, task for you guys to form yeah. your own hangout and invite us. Oh, I see. Yeah, Robin, can you do hear? Do we us? have the time? Hi, Robin. Well, there's a big smile. Yeah. Must be hearing us. So you hear us, but we're not hearing you. Well, I haven't, I'm not seeing her lips. Can you hear me now? Yay. Yes. Yeah. Hi, Robin. <laughs> Thank goodness. Yay. I was getting a stream from um, baseball. <laughs> I didn't think you were talking about uh -huh. baseball. <laughs> you weren't, were you? <laughs> were you talking about crowds going wild and stuff like that at one point? No, we no. weren't even okay. batting. I had <laughs> All right. Hi. Hi. Sorry Hi, for the Robin. delay. Nice Here I am. Too. Hi, Kate. So we were just talking about, did you have a, anything to do on a screen share? Like a I did. Why, it doesn't look like I, I don't see anything for a screen share right now on this. Well, Jeff was going to tutor us and make us, that was going to be our um, extracurricular um, Excellent. graduation. Excellent. Let's go. So, okay. So Good. Robin gets two gold stars. <laughs> yeah. She's very brave. One first We're becoming finding so tech. <laughs> I know. This is yeah. so exciting. <laughs> I really do love Google, though. Yeah. It's brilliant. I can Got ask uh, now. Sure. I, I have just a very small window. Is there a way for me to enlarge her screen and minimize the view, the people? Yeah, you just click on my screen, on me, on my face, like w with the screen I'm showing you. Doesn't that work? That's how it worked last time for me. Hmm. I'm getting just a top quarter of it. I'm not seeing it full size. Wait a second. Let me try something here. Um, and while I'm trying this, Robin, will you tell me um, 
who your learners are? Are they adults? Are they university? Sure. Uh, I teach in Abu Dhabi in the Gulf and so my students are all female. They're 17, 18 years old. It's their first experience with university. Uh, but when I say university, they're not quite university the way that you would think. They're more like high school. So they're very teacher oriented, centered, and uh, a little bit immature, but you know, kind of happy to be in university. They don't like to work and they um, are very social and lovely, lovely girls. Love to talk about my hair and their hair. It's, it's lots of fun. But as far as, um, you know, being uh, independent learners, I really have to kick them to get them going. So that's what this class has been really helpful in doing. Hmm. Is that good? Yeah. It's Tell us how you did it. Oh, how did you okay. kick them into, into action <laughs> in the there? To go? Well, um, I showed them what I was doing with this wiki that you see in front of you. And so um, I had an About Me page, my favorite links, things that I've been doing with uh, this TESOL course, like te practices, uh, principles and practices of online teaching. And I made a class, so I'm going to see if I can click. If I click on this class, do you see them? Or is yes. it, no, I, oh, you do. Oh, it uploads to this right now. Do you see We're this? Welcome, welcome. Yes, welcome. but I'm still welcome. just getting a Level 7, F8, yeah, still resing in too. I would suggest yeah. um, making the Hangout full screen if you haven't already. And My Hangout or theirs? Th um, theirs. Okay. That's what I, I'm trying to do. Oh, I know. Well, no. And then click on Robin's mm -hmm. little square. In mm -hmm. the yeah. And then it's large, as large as it can possibly be. And I have to say, I'm quite, like, when I did the sharing before, I was not that impressed with the screen quality. But now that I've gone full screen, it's really quite nice. It's pretty clear. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can read it. I can read it, yeah, but it's okay. still a quarter, but we'll see. Do you okay. all see me over on the side? Uh, yeah. Like I have squares mm -hmm. that are like two, three by two inches going down, so that takes part of the oh, screen. The other mm -hmm. thing, and I haven't quite figured out exactly how this works. <laughs> it's my dog. In the very upper right, you have a little invite and a red yes. plus. When I click I, that, mm -hmm. the, the speaker goes full screen. Yeah, that's that happened too. I was hoping it would minimize. Well, that's okay, Robin. Go ahead. Okay, I didn't right. see enough. <laughs> How do you get it uh, back? Click um, the click settings, the little gear. Uh huh. Okay. It's not optimal, but it works. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> cool. Okay, now I want it back again. <laughs> I just did. Oh, ex maybe if I put exit. Oh, there we go. All right. Yay! Okay. okay. All right, let me do this fast so that <laughs> it doesn't go away anymore. Okay, so on the right, on the slide, on the sidebar, you'll see FA 2011. Mm -hmm. I see it, so I'm going to click on it. Maybe it's easier to show you what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And because Vance, my students are need it step by step by step, I said exactly what they should put in their me portfolio. So mm -hmm. I explained what a me portfolio is and what I was trying to say is that we have to start start learning together and we must never stop learning. So um, because they are their English is very good as far as speaking and speaking is concerned. They really need a lot of work in listening, reading and writing. So I asked them to make uh, links on each of their pages and I put all of them at the bottom of this page. Do you see their names down here? Yes. Can you see mm -hmm. that? All right. I really like what Aisha has done, and I also like what Raud has done. So I'm going to show the two of these students as my showcase students right now. They're just, just starting. They're on week two. So the first mm -hmm. week I asked them to do their About Aisha's page. And they're, they love photography in the UAE because, you know, they're so... Um, it's the best way for them to express themselves uh, because they're so sheltered. So these are some pictures of the UAE, that's Ras al um, other pictures that she takes of where she lives. So she's sharing these pictures and then she told me about things that she likes to do. 
and things that she dislikes. Guess what? Homework, of course. And uh, she loves candy, like most girls in the school. And so it was basically just pictures, and all of the girls love this. There's some Quran, I'm assuming, and henna that she likes to do. So they can't show pictures of themselves, but they can show pictures of their hands and stuff. So this was very good. They liked to comment on each other's pages, which I have been encouraging. So this was just a way to um, open them up to the idea of a wiki and to help them understand uh, how to um, add photos, how to add links and stuff like that. Now what's really important for their learning is their journal. And so, yes, Kate, you're going to interrupt, I think, or talk? No? Okay. Can you all hear me still? Yes, yes. yes. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Just making sure because you're oh, so Oh, sorry, quiet. I muted my mic. Um, oh, okay. No, I was just reading her English, so I was just... Go ahead. Oh, okay. Well, here's her journals um, right now. She loves to put in lots of um, pictures and... Uh, I didn't like her first entry because she just listed things, the words that she learned. There was no reflective thought process there. But on the second one, I was really happy to see that she started at least writing down some rules. Uh, we were comparing what, in, if, unless and if. So that was pretty good. And now she's starting to look at this. She's finally starting to get it. Today we practiced listening test with the teacher and I failed this practice test because of the accent that the lady used, British accent. I couldn't hear her well. Um, and she didn't organize her notes and she needs practice more. So because of that, uh, we started looking at different sites that she could look at for practicing accents and she found Ello on by her on her own and so she's going on her, by herself and now she's starting to do that as well so they're starting to find grammar links and they're starting to share them and visit each other's pages and so their assignment to this week is to do seven by the end by the end of this week they have to have a total of seven journal entries they have to visit each other 10 times and leave comments and they have to also have a total of 20 links which can include their own writing too which I've been using from Vance doing uh, titanpad.com so I'm really happy with their progress and they're starting really starting to use this which I'm not actually surprised about because Arabic students tend to be more um, community oriented like as um, as a Canadian I'm much more individualistic I like to do my own thing and not I don't like to share very much but these girls love to share so you'll see that uh, look at this I'm really impressed that the student has done so much work so quickly so that's what I've been working on and I have one more thing from uh, Vance that I learned and that is titanpad.com have you used it Kate at all? No, I was reading your blog and it sounds really good, but That's I will amazing. try it soon. Amazing. Um, I would like to share it with you, but let me see if I can. All right. How many hours a week do you see these students? Every day, four hours. And my question was um, how computer literate did they come into the class with? Do they all have. Are they well, allowed to laptop. have iPhones and that sort of yeah. thing? They, it's a laptop in university, so every student is issued a laptop. So uh, pretty. And it's wireless throughout the university. And they all have their, you know, iPhones and they have and if they don't bring their computer because it's too heavy, they bring their iPads. Uh, so yeah, they're they're literate as far as this is concerned. They needed help with understanding how to figure out the wiki, like adding pages and stuff like that, but they're fast and they're confident. So it, that's good. And it doesn't take long. PB works is really good. I think they like this kind of thing. I've, I've always found the students, you know, oh, they might create their own avatars. You know, you said they can't put their pictures up, but they could create avatars uh, and go to Mangatar mm. or something like that, you know, and uh, they can uh, create cartoon characters and make themselves a cartoon character and mm. kind of like we put up our second life avatars, you know, they if they're creating cartoons, they could 
be one of the personalities in the cartoons and that would sort of take on their personality. I tried that uh, Vokey um, that you had on your one of your blogs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was very yeah, so. easy to set up and kind of customize mm -hmm. an avatar and you can put it on your own page, Robin. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Very easy. And you can be an animal or you could be a female and choose your hair color and everything. Yeah. And then you record. It has the audio that you record your message in and then the avatar speaks. Neat. Yeah, so that's a good So um, then does the avatar speak in her voice or in her the recording. student's voice? In her yeah. recording. No, the student, the student, yeah, she records. Or the student records, um, you know, what... Like mine says, hello, this is Vance. How do you like my new Vokey? You know, so that's yeah. just my recording. Yeah. yeah, but it's your words, but it's not your voice, right? My voice. You, my yeah. voice. Oh, it is. Okay. It's just a little, little audio choose. file. Your yes. voice or the mechanical voice. Well, I think that they'd have some of them would prefer to have a mechanical voice because they're mm -hmm. funny. You know, sometimes they say, "Oh no, it's I'm not allowed to have my voice out here because I'm not protected and stuff like that." Anyway, um, can you see my page yes. right now? Does it say todaysmeet.com? Mm -hmm. yes. Oh, wow. This is so cool. So I can navigate mm -hmm. all over the place. Do you mm -hmm. use todaysmeet.com? Have mm -hmm. you ever used this? No, okay. To oh. learn from you. Oh, this is my favorite tool. Oh, this is this is called um, back channeling. So oh, uh, mm. I started, and you can keep it for one month or or as long as you want, or a year. And sometimes my students are at home absent and they can chat with us on this uh, web page or on this channel because this is my Robin level 7-1 class you could name it anything you want and it will stay there so um, let me just show I use this for vocabulary games for one thing like for example uh, I'm going to get here she is Ah, we were learning the word uh, tolerant, tolerate, tolerance, uh, intolerable. So what I do is I uh, set the girls up into teams of five or six, three people in a team, and I'll write the sentence like, you see this one right here? She is blank of babies crying. I was looking for the word tolerant, meaning she accepts it. Rhoda was the first person with tolerate. Tol nope, wrong. Tolerance, nope. Tasney, nope. Tolerant, yay, Mesna. Do you see how they come up like mm -hmm. that? Mm -hmm. So it's the first person to type it in correctly and mm -hmm. um, with the right word form gets a point for the class. And mm. the team that wins gets a homework pass. They don't have to do homework later. This is another <laughs> great reason why I like it is I can post um, um, websites that I want them to follow uh, because oftentimes with my students you know they spell it wrong they forget to put a dot or they put a comma instead of a dot and it takes forever to get my students to go to a website but I can just snap it right in here and my students can follow it so mm -hmm. that's great that's really great for that uh, students often ask questions I'm just quickly <laughs> miss may I leave the class I have an urgent call from my student. Okay, though that was my example. <laughs> All right. Are you are you, uh, are you tolerant of girls leaving your class? Yes. Or are I you am. intolerant? I okay. am. In, I am tolerant. <laughs> I am tolerant. I tell them just to leave. If they're not going to pay attention, they might as well be out of here. Okay. Titan Pad. Here we go. So I set up my class with six groups and I gave them all different topics to write in. And I was very happy with, well, um, all of them actually, but I'll give an example of group six. Uh, so you can see that Fatma was obviously the main writer. She wrote everything. And I wasn't so pleased with that because she's in blue and my explanations are in yellow. So for example, as she's writing, I could say, mm, I don't like this sentence. So I can write it right here. I am not happy with this. Could you change it, please? Okay. And so my comments come in at the same time as her writing. It's fantastic and also I can see that someone was blue down here 
uh, line 10 is blue and then it turned to turquoise so that means that they were actually collaborating at the same time and writing the essay at the same time so this shows me first of all who's been writing more than the others and I can make comments and also they have saved revisions so you can see what it looked like view five days ago what it started to look like and you can see that the two of them were correcting each other's um, sentences. I can see turquoise, I can see blue. And sometimes students end up erasing the whole thing. So I can play the time. You see this play mm -hmm. button right here? Mm -hmm. yep. See yep. that? It mm -hmm. shows exactly and what was going on. Yes? Uh, yeah. You can slide the slider anywhere. Mm -hmm. Are yeah, you aware that any of those points on the slider has its own URL? Yes, and then I could just paste it to them and, and say, go to this one, right? Go to yes, this area. That's right, yeah. Uh -huh. Fantastic. I love that. And mm -hmm. I also really love that you can import and export anything. So, for example, I could, um, I don't want to hurt, the, no, I, I won't. I can import a grammar lesson right away from my computer like um, let's see Doc. oh this isn't my work computer I don't have any uh, vocabulary things here but if I did I could bring up the handout instead of printing it out I can put it up here they can do the handout and then they can save it on Microsoft Word and keep it for a later date um, I'm, I've also been working with massive group sentence structure because my students have a really hard time um, spell uh, with their sentence structure. So here I divided it into group A and group B and I asked them to write sentences with the same word. So for the first group, appealing was the word. So Mariam said she looks appealing today and I wrote, yep, yeah, perfect. The story was appealing. Beautiful. And I'm, you can see all of their different colors and their comment, their um, sentence structure. So I'm very, very happy with TitanPad.com. And so that is what I've taken uh, from this course. Plus, thank you, Kate, so much and Vance for teaching me about Google Reader. I don't have headaches anymore from opening my email. <laughs> so that was really useful for me. And um, I feel a lot more literate. Look at me doing Google Hangouts and sharing web pages. This is just Starting fantastic. your own Hangouts. With yes. extras, yeah. <laughs> With extras. Uh -huh. So it's been really useful. So that's what I've taken from this class. Is there any comments or questions that you'd I like to ask? I have a question um, mm -hmm. uh, and a comment. If you really get um, on Google, you can, you know, it's so integrated. The Google Docs you can share, but also you can use, there's templates that a lot of teachers have already made. Hmm. And for example, you can keep your students' um, grades or their attendance all on a spreadsheet. So my question is, I'm just trying to imagine, in the class you're using the um, wiki for them to create their own portfolios. That's Do you right. open up this Titan Pad every day, I mean the, uh, the meeting live, yes. and conduct the meeting first in text? Yes. Yes. Are you all in the same lab or is this distance? Yeah, we're all, it's all face to face. Okay. We're all in the same class and I just use that um, meeting spot, todaysmeet.com, as a way to open up the class, like see good morning with a big smiley face and uh, I'm like okay let's get started. And so I often like I'm talking to them but also chatting with them this way. Like for example below I said I was talking about my weekend. Mine was exhausted. I got dehydrated and I felt sick, blah, blah, blah. Oh, that's terrible. But this is a great <laughs> way to, uh, that's terrible for you, but this is a great way to um, uh, offer tech support while you're doing face to face. Absolutely. It is. It's fantastic for and face to face like classes. URLs. Mm -hmm. um, and so then you go over to Titan Pad to work on grammar exercises and writing. Mm -hmm. I do. And I, then when there's time, extra time in the class, um, or if a student finishes her work early, I can say, go start working on your wiki, do some more work on that. So it's also a, a fallback that I always have something for them to do. Have you looked or have you used or looked at 
uh, Edmodo or Yammer, the two other yep. tools similar to this one, yeah. Um, okay. And, and yeah. what is Edmodo? Edmodo is sort of like the educational Twitter, isn't it? Yeah, something similar to that. Um, it, I, this, is that right? Uh, today, is today's Meet uh, asynchronous as well? If someone comments, you can go in and... Uh, I mean, do you have to start the meeting or does it record everything? <laughs> uh, I, st I don't think that's what you want me to check out, eh? <laughs> E-D-M-O-D-O. Um, Ed Edward oh. Modo. <laughs> Modo, yeah, that's it. Uh -huh. <laughs> right. um, uh, sorry, it is. Uh, it's synchronous, but it can be asynchronous because if they can go back and read it all the time, mm -hmm. is that what you're meaning, Vance? Asking me? Um, yeah, they go back and read it, and then if they have questions uh, overnight, they can post there, and if you, yeah. you'll see it when you log on. Unfortunately, their teacher isn't as dedicated as you, because when I turn <laughs> off my computer at 3 o'clock, it doesn't usually turn on until I'm back in class. So, uh, yeah. I, But it could work. Like if I was teaching online, I could be there more often, or if I put it to my phone, I could definitely. Can can you have more than one class going so that you check in and you can see four or five different classes in one? Well, I'd space? have to make different class groups, so I'd have level seven dash one, level seven dash two. Sure, I could do that. I just I okay. just name it a different uh, chat room. Uh -huh. Yeah, chat here area. when when you're a teacher, you can set up mm -hmm. different groups. Each group gets a code and. Mm. Um, so the st students have to have the code to get into the class. So, okay. uh, and you can, and, and you'll see all your different groups are all arrayed in one place, and then you can go to them, um, and uh, you know, and use them in class in the same way that you're using go go uh, go to the meeting. Is that what mm -hmm. it's called? Go to Today's meet. meet. Yeah. Today's meet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, yeah, it's a, it's a nice interface. I can't remember the other affordances off the top of my head, but the one that the students kind of liked was Yammer, and they liked Yammer because it looked a bit like Facebook, and they thought okay. that was cool. Yammer. Yammer, yeah. Y a m m e r. Yes. Uh huh. Yammer. dot com. Okay. And I think Yammer, um, there might have been a reason because maybe it was the free part of it wasn't so uh, wasn't so robust. I'm I'm not really sure. I only used it one ah, semester. So this is Facebook just for your class and nobody else. But can they share it with their friends like outside of our workspace? I don't think so. This this one, as you see, it's it's to connect with your coworkers. So it okay. it. It's supposed to be something that's all of these are perform have walled gardens. They create walled gardens. Mm. So, uh, just like Posturus can do, you know, you can also do that yep. with Posturus. They they have to have a code in order. You, know, they, you can set it up so they have to log in to see it, and they have to be a, a an invited member of that group. Mm -hmm. So all of these kind of make little back channels but I, I like uh, yeah I haven't tried uh, today's meet although Edmodo and uh, Yammer are okay but I find the disadvantage with those all of those tools is that they're not really part of your workflow so it's actually better if you use Twitter uh, mm -hmm. and then get the students on the Twitter because then you don't have to what, what you can do is you can create a list of the students in your class and you can have a um, you, by by looking at the list, you add them to different lists, each one for the class. And of course, the students can go to those lists. The lists have URLs, so mm. you can see what each person is feeding into the list. It's a place mm. you're. It's a space you're more likely to visit in the course of your everyday life mm. than what I was doing. Is I was going to Edmodo. Oh yeah, uh, check Edmodo. You know, so uh, I'd find messages from five days ago. You know, the students <laughs> needed help with something. And, <laughs> Unfortunately, it didn't wasn't as seamless as if you actually pick a tool that everybody is really right. using. Yeah, I have. I've, I'm now in Twitter, but I have not uh, someone that actually goes to Twitter. I'm kind of like you with, oh, I have to go to Twitter, and uh, I'll mm -hmm. go and I'll check it every couple of days and go, oh, right, I should be. It's probably because I haven't found like a following that I'm really, really learning from quite yet. So I've got to get back into that. 
Yeah, if you really want to see Twitter in action, uh -huh. use it as a, at a conference. Because uh. that's, that's where you, know, you have a conference tag and the people you interact with uh, at conferences, it, it can bring a conference together. And then huh. you can see, uh, I mean, it brings certain people in the conference together. I mean, you're tweeting that you're in a session and someone else is tweeting they're in the same session and you look around the room, oh, yeah, that's that person over there, you know? <laughs> so it brings the people who are tweeting together. Okay. And I think that sort of, if, if you can get that going in your class, you know, that, right. that's a... Uh, but that would serve that a different a function nice. than what I think she's using today's meet. I mean, today's meet kind of has that nice interactive game show activity thing that I don't think Twitter would work as well for. And I just, I mean, I... No, I, yeah, you're right. The dialogue, I like the, the look of this. Dialogue. I, I like the fact that it's so light. And I think it works on everybody's browser, everybody's platform. You don't have to register. I'm That's thinking what I love about it. we should use this for EdTech Talk or something. It's just straight line, <laughs> easy to find, and it's yeah. yeah. It's automatic. Twitter's archived. good though for like dropping hints to the students or doing word games. You could put a definition, ask them to tweet the word to the definition. Oh, yeah. Little games like that, but unless it, they're already there using it. And then there's always the issue of like you know, how many different places do you want them? Yeah. Like, I use a lot of Google tools just so like they have the same login and yeah. the same password and, mm, but you know, there's, there's functionality same. in today's meet that's not in the Google universe. And uh, the other one, the, the Titan document. Pad? Titan yeah. pad's very cool. You know, yeah. I was trying like to Google decide. Docs, but got some functionality that Google Docs doesn't. Well, that's well, Google the reason bot why I like Titan, Or Google bot, sorry. Yeah, anyway, Google bought the company that made uh, uh, Etherpad. It's called Etherpad. Uh, Titanpad. It, it was an open source code. It's my Google mic bought on. the company. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Um, Robin, have you had other of the TESOL courses? Have we been in one together before? No, I don't think so, Kate. I've is taken. This the first one? Is this, no, this is my fifth. Really? I've been taking it over two years, and so I've my I have one more to go, and then I it's the uh, certificate one. So I start it, I think, next week. Oh. Me too. So we'll yeah. be in that together. Oh, good, good, good. Because good. you have VoiceThread, which I love VoiceThread. I, I think it's haven't very used cool. It at all. They didn't teach you that. Um, yeah, I I did everything. I just it didn't stick with me. You know how yeah. you find a tool and make it your yeah. own. Didn't but, catch um, that one. They were always having us try to do. Um, what happens in TitanPad mm -hmm. with Microsoft Word and Microsoft Word is pretty kludgy and trying to learn that real-time editing tool now TitanPad's different than a wiki in that TitanPad is real-time right a wiki it's asynchronous right yeah Google Google Docs is a wiki and so is TitanPad but they're both uh, it can be written on silent, you know, by numerous users, and they update on the fly. Wikis also. Well, a wiki. I mean, a wiki isn't if a you wiki. Have of three space people editing where the same wiki page. Write. Do you see them typing as they type? Well, that would that depends on the the robustity of the wiki and the Google Docs had it where, and then TitanPad or EtherPad actually came along and made what you're trying to do in Google Docs. I mean, I, I did experiments with uh, faculty members. We would all go in a meeting. We would, in a, we would go into Google Docs to test it. And five or six people trying to write on the same document at the same time, it was just impossible. You know, it just was so clunky. Seems then, like it would be. But with Etherpad, or all those clones, uh, TitanPad being one, that it's just so fluid, you know. It just uh, you can you can just do. There's so many things you can do with it. Hmm. Um, I, I, it's getting kind of like we've been here for a little over an hour, and I'd really like to hear what Kate is up to. Me too. So maybe we could, Me too. Yeah. And I just want right, to say well, one like thank you, Robin. That was great. You helped me plan yes. my call class this week, and wow. <laughs> See, it paid off staying up to one in the morning, yeah. right? <laughs> okay, now I already have ready to go, so all I have to do is invite you Excellent. all, right? Or can I just share, can we just, share. Can I just share the screen mm -hmm. rather than go through a whole? Good, good, good. Okay. It's like show and tell. Um, now I have to do what Robin went through, and I have, have to fun. He's blank, <laughs> blinking all over the place. Okay, here the first thing I looked this up while. Um, 
Uh, I go. see. Okay. Vance was talking to oh, you. Gone. Oh, there it is. There's the Vokey. Oh, this is the Vokey that I made based upon. So you see, it's very easy to make. You create it it's very fast. And then you record your little podcast. And I'm not going to play it, but I just thought I'd show that to you. So I could choose the hair color. The background is their default. Do you have animals and that sort of thing? It's just a little gimmick, but it seems like you have that age group. Yes, they'd love this. Yeah, and then it's just a little podcast, so you hit record, and then you don't have to publish it. I, you can just, I emailed it to a few people. I was just curious. I guess they have lesson plans. I don't think there's a whole lot there, but, um, you know, so they can put that on their little wiki and do their own voice. Now, I'm going to stop recording. Now, I opened up multiple windows so I could make this fluid, and now I realized when I said share screen, I went through what Robin had. There's a million <sighs> windows. Now, what I did was I figured that a lot of... Here, let me just back up here. You could also um, share the desktop, in which case whatever you're looking at, we're looking at. Okay. You don't think I'll make you nauseous? Well, most of the good rights. <laughs> so far, it's been okay. if, if it's like my husband with the TV remote, you'll be screaming. I watch like four programs at once. Um, that was a good comeback, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't hear what you said. He says, well, wow. the windows you see. He said, most of the good rights well, do make you nauseous. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Well, that did not work. Let me give you a little introduction that I had written out so that I would know what I was going to say. I didn't know whether we were going to be talking about what we did or reflect on the course, so I did a little bit of both. And my process for learning, I'm going to get out of the web heads right now because there's just too many screens open if that's okay. Um, so what I did uh, my process was I put some a lot of stuff on my uh, pastas page and I decided that those were already there so what I did today was a little PowerPoint of two webinars that I went to which was an overview um, because this is I started back March or April trying to complete this TESOL course so I've had back-to-back -back courses Whoa. and I've been exposed to so many different applications so what I tried to do on the posturous page was supply some of the applications so that I can just practice because I know that if you don't continue to use these and that's why these cool casts and mm -hmm. screen things are so helpful if you don't continue to use you get so rusty and so it would be a waste so I created a little movie on my posturous page that took me eight hours and I oh, oh my gosh. gosh did I have to edit a bunch I mean the editing I need so much work on voice editing and and um, so I cut out a bunch I didn't mean to and then I got ready to load it yesterday and realized that I had taken part of a YouTube that I didn't ask permission so I cut that out those are on my posturous pos Posturus page and part of my focus was learning how to use Posturus which um, I'd never I'd always tried to avoid blogs and I so when it came and then my second choice of focus was to look at um, tech assistive technologies for special learners because the first week and this is on my Posturus page but the first week of this course when I was trying to decide I was invited uh, in world by a mutual friend in Second Life to come see a premiere or a trailer for a movie that's coming out in October called Log Into Life and it's going to be uh, it's a documentary looking at people using Second Life and World of Warcraft and what it means to them and it's uh, going to be in Germany in mid-October and then whatever so that's on my posturous page and there's a woman that is featured in that who has MS she's uh, her name in Second Life is Gentle Heron and she's been running an island called Virtual Abilities and I don't know if Jeff and um, 
fans are familiar with that but they won ten thousand dollars from the company a couple years ago for innovation and th on this blog that you'll see maybe I should open that up I'm looking at it right now oh you are okay that well, woman yours. Si yeah that woman sitting try? there that particular website web to life uh, log on to life has a has a um, video of her presenting. She's an education researcher um, who got MS and has been doing a lot in Second Life. And I saw this and it was a wonderful um, premiere, very touching. And I've been learning so many technologies that I realized, okay, first of all, English language learners are considered special needs in the U.S. in the school system. Um, there was a time that before they were properly assessed, they were a lot of them were put in um, classes with other special needs before they realized it was a language issue and not a, another issue. But then I realized a lot of what they're learning for teaching special needs is stuff that we've already been taught as professionals for teaching ELLs. But then I realized, well, a lot of them may have hearing issues or vision issues, and if we're teaching online, I'd be curious to look into some of the assistive technologies or what's available. So that all happened the first or second week, and that's why I chose that as my focus. Mm -hmm. So that's all on the process page. And so for today, I just did a little, I attended two or three webinars. Let me move my screen and open that little um, PowerPoint that I did. Okay. Um, I attended two webinars that happened to be um, offered, one through Education Week and one through E-Week. E, e are, you, are you sharing your screen? I'm about to. Oh, okay. I'm trying to find the appropriate window. I'm going to minimize the Hangout window, right? I don't need it until I share it. There we go. Once I share it, I'll do that. Okay. But I tried, okay. for example, mm -hmm. I tried, um, we learned in reading and writing this book builder, and I tried putting something on book builder. Um, one of our readings that Vance suggested I put in the book builder, that's on my post posturous. I tried to open it today and I saw you had to have a passcode so I'll show that to you in a second. Um, so this is a quick PowerPoint. I never use PowerPoint. My husband is a former web designer, print designer. He does all really nice fancy PowerPoints so I never have to do them. <laughs> <laughs> so this is just, I may, I'm going to make this very brief. These are just highlights of um, two courses I uh, webinars I attended during this course. I don't teach in K through 12. I don't want to teach K through 12 at this point in my life. But I was curious to see what's going on with them and how they're addressing um, special needs learners and any sort of technology. And at the time, this is the beginning of the school year, so this um, s these two webinars and this special report came out, which was very handy. Um, so my first point the demographics you see here with the arrow um, ELLs are the lowest of the special needs population in the US that are being reached which I thought I'm just pulled the the most interesting to me since this is my portfolio but the, uh, this is not on the posture so um, they you know the big headline of one of the th um, speakers was just because it goes into digital format does not make it accessible and this of course is what we're learning and and what we know and what we're seeing and and what I've been seeing as I've been trying the last four years of um, learning about teaching online is it's really amazing what people call online education is just throwing up a textbook um, the the population covered in that special report, and I'll be happy to send the full reports or the full PowerPoints if anyone's interested. Um, the autistic learners, ELLs, and advanced students were the ones considered special needs. And uh, the bottom line is classes weren't designed for this group in mind. They still don't have training components for the instructors when they buy the um, technology. 
Um, the tech matrix I thought was interesting. It's a tool that educators can search for assistive technology um, by the content area, which would be interesting. Why is and an ELL considered a special needs person? Like, isn't it's not like a mental or physical special need, right? Right, but for a long time in the American schools before they had um, proper assessment tools, they were a lot of the ELLs were lumped into there until they finally figured out how to assess them properly. Hmm. Um, and it's interesting that when I went to see special needs, they're still being thrown in as a special needs group which I think is interesting. The other thing that I that I find interesting is because the techniques that we were taught in scaffolding and and um, all the you know um, supporting with audio and text and, and offering multiple channels it seems like a new approach to a lot of other teachers for other things. Another interesting thing that's happening in, in the US is that the textbooks have become so complicated that even in the higher end schools they're sending in literacy coaches to sit with these bright students to just be able to go through their history books or whatever because there's just so much information. They're bringing in literacy coaches to help them pull content and of course they use the same techniques that we were taught in teaching English as a second language or whatever you want to call it, teaching languages which I think is really interesting. Um, so yes, when you go for special needs, ELLs are still um, lumped in there. Um, that, another thing I thought was interesting is they're still in the research stage of um, online learning. How and why do people participate and how to teach effectively. And the budget's been cut so dramatically that now they're learning to mix funding um, for ELLs. Um, title one and Title three, I'm not sure exactly, but um, one is for very poor um, f urban schools or rural schools, doesn't have to be urban. I don't know if you all are aware of the UDL, uh, Universal Design for Learning. I had heard a little bit about this in this book thing I made. I'll show you in a second. Um, I learned about in the reading and writing course I just took. And this is a very nice organization and this cast book builder is one I experimented with. But it's just now universal design for learning and of course they're teaching a lot of the techniques that, that we know. And so they're talking about the opportunity for learning in this webinar and they're talking about you know how do you give them these courses with the cost and the scheduling and credit problems and you know how can they go full-time and and get their school permission or districts and the one I thought was amusing is how do you do it how do you deliver high quality learning which is still a big question for them it's just it was it really interesting for me to see what stage and you know Jeff we were talking a little bit about this at the beginning while we were waiting for Robin but um, Robin Joe said some of his Korean students come over here and realize how far advanced um, the school systems are in Korea as far as technology. Then they went into the six challenges and the deficiency in curriculum, the lack of staff and lack of time and they still are trying to find you know the students. They don't have a way to identify the students which I thought was interesting. And course engagement and motivation, which is everyone's concern. Um, this is the UDL. I just got a Gmail about something from Robin. All right, the second one I went to that was interesting was um, uh, school district in Texas were teaching about how they've been uh, delivering online learning to the homebound and in treatment students, which again is a consideration I hadn't thought about. Uh, you know, um, the U.S. is not the same as it used to be, and it's there are a lot of homeless children now going to school. A lot of children that live in hotels. Um, so. Uh, these categories I thought were interesting. 
um, they're missing weeks or months they're staying disconnected um, and their groups are they're either in the hospital they're pregnant they're in drug or psychiatric treatments court-ordered placement or homeless shelters so these were different aspects that are not the traditional oh let's teach online there's special areas so this um, district in Texas has hired out a special um, organization that is fulfilling or filling in a lot of the gaps because before they were taking teachers from the schools to visit the hospitals or visit the homeless shelters to to deliver instruction and so what they're doing now is they're showing you know how um, farming it out to this agency which is a community service they're able to reduce it and basically the uh, community service teachers are supporting the curriculum designed by the regular teachers and um, these are some of their challenges a lot of them have no records they're, they're not consistent they enrolled in many schools um, and the, the staff um, demands um, more challenges some of them in hospitals they stay in motels for months and um, again there's a whole technology issue that they have to deal with so they deliver the technology um, in the old way of distance ed trying to reach this particular groups they either you know they see the teachers one to four hours um, it's expensive and inefficient this new way using an agency to supplement the students are getting what I thought the best takeaway the students are getting real face-to-face -face time they're getting real engagement by these community teachers that are going there and meeting with them um, and um, they can offer you know content um, trained people and that's that's it for those two so that was the big takeaway from those two webinars which was a new angle and new perspective I hadn't thought about there's not just teaching online to ELLs there may be issues with the ELLs um, here's the book builder oops I'm gonna rush through this so we can finish up here's this book builder I did um, that is part of that universal um, design for learning it's the cast organization and I used uh, Dow Sean Dowling's oops I gotta mm -hmm. click on the right screen here I use Sean Dowling's uh, paper that Vance had suggested um, can you see it okay mm -hmm. okay so this is a, a universal design book builder and it's very easy you can use a preset avatar or coach they call them coach you can make your own and I made my own and these are audio files that you record did you hear that uh, barely okay it doesn't matter but that's just an example so you basically record and they're very small short audio files so you record and you can have three or four coaches that can prompt and um, here you you have some more um, and there's a glossary you can you can make they have some pre-made books Robin I don't know um, you can look through yeah, I'm looking for what what um, link it is called. It's bookbuilder.com yeah. or I'll show you in just a second. Oh, okay. So it just shows you can a lot of it has the same type of um, template build or the pre-made templates you choose the book, but the the same text um, design that you get with any of the cloud like Gmail and that sort of thing. You can bring in little things. Um, and here this is an example I made two words in the glossary so it has a glossary and you can I didn't take the time to fill in the definitions I just wanted to practice it and then these are my concluding thoughts and again you can have standard audio or you can have the coaches and this I will go back to its cast 
um, on UDL Book Builders. I'll be happy to email these to you. And it's also on my um, Posturous blog, the link to this. So you can create and share, um, read books, and you choose the level, 1 through um, K through 12 or older. And I made my own, but there are some books already made, and you can share books. And there's an option that the students can add their voice recording. Hmm. And uh, it's it's nice. It's like kind of like a here's a spotlight book. It's kind of to me reminded putting it there the other some pre-made um, um, coaches is what they call them. And um, it's kind of reminded me of a. PowerPoint, putting it together. It's very easy because again, they they have the um, the templates. I recorded everything in Audacity. Um, outside of that, I don't really have everything is in my posturous um, thing. Here is my. I did a few. Here is the um, iMovie I tried to make that took forever. And here is the Login to Life teaser with, with Alice and the um, movie. I, uh, my, I was interested. Um, my cousin had MS. She's gone now. But she lived in a little tiny town in Kentucky cut off from everything and I often think that if social media had been more advanced or Second Life, she had known about Second Life, it would have been a big um, world to her or even e-learning, you know. So that was in four short weeks. It was a very superficial overview of assistive technology but it's, um, it was a new perspective. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, and uh, certainly appreciate both of your contributions to the course. Uh, <laughs> I've had more participants sometimes with less interaction, so uh, <laughs> you guys kept it going and uh, seemed very appreciative. And uh, mm. not only that, but um, you know, obviously taking things in directions of your own, which uh, mm. helped me to learn. And I suppose there are other people in the network who are also. Uh, gaining from all this. So we have some really positive outcomes. So yeah. it's really nice to work with you. Thank yes, you. it is. And I look forward to more mooking. I really like the idea of that. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. yeah. Oh, nice. and How long is this uh, mook, the change 2000? Forever. Through May. Forever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay. <laughs> it's once a week. See, it's a very convenient time for me, though, Robin. It's like or mid morning on a Wednesday for me. So it's very easy for, or no, 12 o'clock. Jeff's cool cast is very convenient time for me. Mm -hmm. He's on a Wednesday. And so it's. Yeah, that usually falls at nighttime for us, eh, Vance, I think? Um, not a bad time at night. It's about 6 30 or something like that That's in the evening. Very bad time for me. <laughs> yeah, this is this is kind of a bad time for Jeff. It's, yeah, you know, it must be two o'clock. It the is. We've there. passed two a.m. and uh, oh, Tech really Weekly is coming it. up in less than six hours, and I should probably uh, okay. get some sleep in well, there. Well, thanks, Jeff. Thank you. I have one question, Jeff. How are you recording this? I'll because I have Camtasia now. Uh, thanks to this last class. Camtasia actually is a very Camtasia. nice way to record it. Uh, and they make it easy to record both ends of the conversation. I use. Uh, screencast-o-matic and a little bit of magic. <laughs> okay. uh, the, the, the challenging part is to get both sides of the audio, so I have a, I have a whole guide on my site that I'll, I'll toss the link in for. Um, That's okay. Uh, I'll, I'll <laughs> kind of, as we go along, I mean, you've been doing it for a while and you're so fluid. I mean, when I did this movie that's on the posturous, this, the last class I just finished was using multimedia, and we had to do Camtasia and iMovie, and so I really wanted to practice at it, and man, it takes a lot of Video work. Video editing takes forever, uh, especially if you have any standards. Um, audio editing <laughs> is a little faster. 
Do well, thank you. I won't keep you up any longer. And nice to meet you, Robin and Vance, and we'll talk another time. Well, yeah. thank you. It's well, been a pleasure uh, crossing virtual paths with you all. Uh, yes. Thanks yes. for letting me hang out with you all. And I did want to say hello to Holly in the chat room who's been uh, oh. tuning in. Oh. oh cool. Hi, Holly. Yeah. Well, our networks just are ongoing. There's Webheads. There's the Multiple Literacies Network, which continues, and Jeff's always got a network going. World Bridges World, the world of World Bridges all the bridges that he's building and so he's been doing this for a long time and I'm sure it's going to last forever or I always say that it's something worth doing is going to continue after you stop doing it so yeah who knows you know I'm, this has helped me to brain. really um, push toward the Google circles I'm I I just really dislike Facebook and Google circles might be a nice solution of just staying on top of things mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That can be another conversation. Thank you all. Thanks, Kate. Okay. Thanks. Well, anyway, thanks, yeah, thanks. very nice to see everybody, and thanks for the course. And uh, yes, thank you. Thanks, thank you, Jeff. Thanks, Jeff. Congratulations Bye. on your graduation. Don't stay yes. out too late tonight partying. <laughs> well, I'm going to take Miss <laughs> Trudy now for her. She's been very patient. We're going to go. There she is. I'm going to take her for yeah. her. She's now awake and ready to go. <laughs> Enjoy Time your was walk. Good. Yes. Bye. Night. Bye. Okay. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye, Vince. <laughs>